In this video, we will introduce the main ideas of the kinetic theory of matter. In a second video, we will explore calorimetry and work through some example problems. First, we will introduce the main ideas of particles, internal energy, temperature, states of matter, and density. Next, we will discuss the heating and cooling curves that result when energy is put into or taken out of a substance. These curves will be explored with a focus on the potential and kinetic energy of the particles of the substance and will include phase changes. The kinetic theory states that on a microscopic scale, all matter is made up of particles. These can either be molecules or atoms depending on the substance. These particles are always in motion and are attracted to each other through intermolecular forces. Because the particles have mass and are in motion, they have kinetic energy. And because there's an attractive force acting between the particles, they have potential energy, which increases as the particles are moved further apart. Adding or removing energy can increase or decrease the amount of motion the particles have, affecting the kinetic energy. It can also change the distance between the particles, affecting the potential energy. The internal energy of a substance, which is given the symbol capital U, is the sum of the kinetic and potential energy of the molecules of the substance. Let's consider the internal energy of the particles of the substance. The kinetic energy of the particles is due to the motion of the particles. This motion can be either vibration, rotation, linear motion, or a combination of all three. The degree of freedom that a particle has to move is determined by the state of the substance, solid, liquid, or gas. The potential energy is due to the attractive intermolecular forces. The further apart the particles are, the higher the potential energy is. The temperature of a substance is directly proportional to the average kinetic energy of the particles of the substance. A common unit of temperature is degrees Celsius, which is based on the freezing and boiling temperature of pure water at standard atmospheric pressure. Because zero degrees Celsius is the freezing point of water, there are temperatures that can easily be measured that are lower than this, so temperatures in Celsius can be negative. This contradicts the relationship between temperature and kinetic energy, as kinetic energy cannot have negative values. The SI unit of temperature is the Kelvin, which sets the lowest possible temperature at zero Kelvin. Zero degrees Celsius is equal to 273.15 Kelvin. Although the Kelvin and Celsius temperature scales are offset, the magnitudes of the unit are the same. So if an object temperature increases from 0 degrees Celsius to 10 degrees Celsius, it will have increased from 273.15 Kelvin to 283.15 Kelvin. The increase in both temperature scales will be 10 units. The density of a substance is the mass per unit volume. The symbol used for density is the lowercase rho and it has units of kilogram per meter cubed or grams per centimeter cubed. Because a gas does not have a fixed volume, but will take the volume of the container, gases do not have a constant density. Consider a gas in a container. If the volume of the container is increased, the mass of the gas will remain constant, but the density will have decreased. The volumes of solids and liquids change little during heating, and so they are considered to have constant densities. There are three phases of matter, solid, liquid, and gas. The phase of matter is determined by the freedom of movement of the particles of the substance. In a solid, the particles are close together and movement is restricted to vibration. Solids have a fixed volume and shape. In a liquid, the particles are a little further apart, allowing some translational movement, but the intermolecular forces are still strong enough to keep the particles together. Liquids have a fixed volume, but not a fixed shape. In a gas, the particles are far enough apart that the intermolecular forces are very low. Gases have no fixed volume and no fixed shape. Gases will expand to the volume that they are in. When heat is added or removed from a substance, it will increase or decrease the internal energy. Let's consider a situation in which the internal energy of a substance is increased. A mass M of ice is placed in a beaker on a hot plate and energy is transferred into the ice. A thermometer is placed such that the temperature can be measured over time and a graph of temperature as a function of time is created. The ice has an initial temperature Ti and is a solid. Its particles are close together with little freedom of movement. As energy is transferred from the hot plate, the kinetic energy of the particles increases, increasing the temperature of the ice. Because temperature and kinetic energy are directly proportional, 
this temperature increase is linear. The temperature will continue to increase linearly until the melting point is reached. When the ice has reached this temperature, its particles have enough energy to undergo a phase change from solid to liquid. During a phase change, the energy that's being transferred into the substance is increasing the intermolecular potential energy of the particles and not the kinetic energy. Phase changes occur at a constant temperature that are characteristic to the substance. Here, ice changes from a solid to a liquid at a temperature of 0 degrees Celsius or 273.15 Kelvin. The graph will show a horizontal line while the phase change is occurring until the entire mass of the substance has changed phase. At this point in the example, the mass of ice has changed phase into a liquid. As heating continues, the energy is again transferred into kinetic energy for the particles, with the temperature of the liquid increasing linearly until the boiling point is reached. The boiling point is the temperature in which a substance will change phase from liquid to gas. The boiling point of water is 100 degrees Celsius or 373.15 Kelvin. When the liquid reaches its boiling point, a phase change between liquid and gas phases will occur. The energy transferred into the liquid will again go into the potential energy of the particles, increasing the distance between them until they are free of the intermolecular forces. The temperature will be constant throughout the entire phase change, and a horizontal line will appear on the graph. This phase change will continue until the entire mass of the liquid has changed phase into a gas. The process again repeats, and the energy being transferred will go towards increasing the kinetic energy of the particles. The temperature of the gas will increase linearly, assuming the container is closed. This graph of temperature as a function of time is known as a heating curve, and will have the same shape for every substance. It will show linear increases in temperature where the kinetic energy of the particles increases, and horizontal portions where the potential energy is increasing and a phase change is occurring. Different substances will have different temperatures at which these phase changes occur, but the overall shape of the graph will be the same. If the energy is removed from the substance, then the graph is known as a cooling curve. In summary, the internal energy of a substance is the sum of the kinetic and potential energies of the particles in a substance. The kinetic energy is directly proportional to the Kelvin temperature. Temperature can also be measured in degrees Celsius. The scale of these units is the same, but 0 degrees Celsius is equal to 273.15 Kelvin. Adding or removing energy to the particles of a substance will cause either the kinetic energy of the particles to change, changing the temperature, or the potential energy of the particles to change, changing the phase. These changes can be shown on a heating or cooling curve. A temperature time graph with sloping sections related to the kinetic energy change where the temperature is changing and horizontal sections relating to the potential energy change where the phase is changing.